at the person next to you. Recognize the God in you. I recognize the God in you. Now feel the love in the sanctuary. Lift your voice and repeat after me. We come together, 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 we come together in the name of love. We come together, we come together, we come together, we come together, we come together in the name of love. Take a look at the person next to you. Say, I love you and I love you too. I love you and I love you too. Now feel the love in the sanctuary. Lift your voice and repeat after me. We come together, come together, come together, come together, come together, come together in the name of love. We come together, come together, come together, come together, come together, come together in the name of love. Every walk of life, every walk of life, every creed and color, every creed and color, in chip we unite. Be in honor of the God in each other. Take a look at the person next to you. Say, Namaste, I bow to you. Namaste, I bow to you. Now feel the love in the sanctuary. Lift your voice and repeat after me. We come together. 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 Together in the name of love, we come together. Come together, we come together. Come together, come together. Come together in the name of love, we come together. Come together, we come together. Come together, come together. Come together in the name of love, we come together. Come together, we come together. Come together, come together. Come together in the name of love. Yes, good morning and welcome to Ahava Center for Spiritual Living. Ahava is the Hebrew word for love. We gather together every Sunday knowing that love is always the answer. That's right. I'm Reverend Rainbow, so grateful to get to serve as your assistant minister. And today our senior director, oops, I said senior, I meant spiritual director. You know, she doesn't like that senior minister title. <laughs> Our spiritual director, Reverend Sonny, is taking a Sunday off, so hooray for self-care, right? I'll be getting one of those again soon. So she sends her love as always, and we want to welcome you here today to our global community. Wherever you are joining us online, please check in and let us know who you are where you're from, and if you're here for the first time, know that your presence makes a difference. Today, we have practitioner Patty Cooper as your online host on Facebook, and we have practitioner Cynthia Chinquina on YouTube. So say hello, give them some love. Thank you for your service. I now invite you to affirm with me our vision and our purpose statement. Please repeat after me. We are an inclusive community. We are an inclusive community committed to global transformation. Committed to global transformation through personal evolution. Through personal evolution. And our purpose is say it together: wake, wake up, up, step up, up and make, make a difference. difference. That's right. We have some wonderful things coming up. Make sure you save the date. On September 13th, we are doing another Zoom service. We had so much fun being together, getting to interact and see your faces, so we decided to do it again. That service will be on September 13th. Last week, we announced that our special guest was going to be Reverend Mark Anthony Lord. There's been a change of plans due to his schedule change, and we now have another fabulous guest. I am super excited to get to introduce you all to my friend, beloved colleague, Reverend Galen McDowell. He's going to be with us. He's amazing. He comes out of Chicago, and he is featured in this month's Science of Mind magazine. So if you get that, take a look. He has an article in there, and he's uh, written for the magazine in the past as well, so you may recognize him from that. So he'll be our guest September 13th. Please go ahead and put that in your calendar. We're excited to be together. 
And following that service, we'll have another one of our social hours so we can connect and get to commune a little bit as if we were here sharing coffee together. On September 25th, we have another opportunity to gather together as community in person, but outside socially distanced. We're gonna be having an outdoor sunset concert with Fire Flying. That is our very own Kim Damata. She's one of our members of our vocal team here, as well as our practitioner. Her and her partner, John, have a duo called Fire F Flying. You do need to reserve your spot for that because we have limited spots in order to be socially distant, yes? All right, speaking of music, how about this band, y'all? Woo! They don't want to cheer for themselves, so I guess. <laughs> we, need, we need one of those. Yeah, there you go. Thank you. All right, music director Joe Chinquina, also on bass. Give him some love. Yeah. We have uh, Lauren Dechtenberg on keys. Today, filling in on the drums for our beloved Reverend Sonny, we have John Dittard. Woo! <laughs> there we go. Our featured vocalist today is Justin Norris. Yay! And Mr. Jeff Watts, making us all sound good. That's right. All right. So, I invite you now to repeat after me our affirmation today. The nature of life is one of diversity. The nature of life one of diversity. I see the colorful, wonderful, and mystical. I see the colorful, wonderful, and mystical. Variances that are expressed uniquely as each of us. Variances uniquely as each of us. We got it. We got it. All right. <laughs> We're so grateful for your continued financial support for allowing us to continue to bring you wonderful services like this and opportunities to gather and all the gifts that come from spiritual community. So again, there are several ways you can give. There is no gift too large or too small. You can text the word gift to 859-209-6996. You can also go to the giving tab on our website. Or if you're on Facebook, just simply hit that donate button. We make it super easy for you. All right, so I invite you now to open your hearts, open your minds as we move into our centering. So grateful to recognize the one life that is love, that is peace, that is divine order. Knowing that this one life is expressing right here, right now as me, as each and every one of us. So it is from this place of oneness that I speak a word of blessing now upon this Sunday celebration service. Knowing that the notes that are played, the words that are spoken and sung are that of the divine, that we show up as this conduit to allow spirit life God to have its way through us this day so I know that everyone that's here in the sound of my voice in this now moment that this love this peace this order is right here right now 
So now that we open our hearts and minds to receive, to hear that aha moment that is especially for our heart to receive this day. And I know everything flows together for good. As I call it all good, this time is blessed. We are blessed. And so it is. turn it to Joe for this morning's reading. Today's reading is Messenger by Mary Oliver. My work is loving the world. Here are the sunflowers, there the hummingbird, equal seekers of sweetness. Here are the quickening yeast, there are the blue plums. Here are the clam deep in the speckled sand. Are my boots old? Is my coat torn? Am I no longer young and still not half perfect? Let me keep my mind on what matters, which is my work, which is mostly standing still and learning to be astonished. The Phoebe, the Delphinium, the sheep in the pasture, and the pasture, which is mostly rejoicing since all the ingredients are here, which is gratitude to be given a mind and a heart and these body clothes a mouth with which to give shouts of joy to the moth and the wren, to the sleepy dug up clam, telling them all over and over how it is that we live forever. You with the sadness Don't be discouraged Oh, I realize It's hard to take courage In a world full of people You can lose sight of it And the darkness deep inside you Made you feel so small But I see your true color Shining through, I see your true colors. That's why I love you. So don't be afraid to let them show your true colors. Our true colors are beautiful like a Show me a smile, then don't be unhappy, can't remember when I last saw you laughing. This world makes you crazy, and you've taken all you can there. You call me up, and you know I'll be there, and I see your true color. 
begin by going on a little journey in our imagination. So play with me if you will. Close your eyes and imagine in your mind's eye looking at a beautiful garden. It has flowers of so many different colors, textures, and heights. It has every different type of wildflower, plants and trees, all unique. Really look at the variety of colors in the garden. And now scale back in your imagination as if you were slightly floating above this colorful garden, looking down. Now pretend that you have a pair of glasses. And when you put on these glasses, they have special lens that render you colorblind. Not the kind of colorblind where you just can't distinguish perhaps between a couple different colors, but literally you are unable to see color, any colors. You can still see that the flowers are flowers, that the trees are trees, the plants are plants. But there's no variation in color. It's kind of like looking at a grayscale photo. You're looking at the garden colorblind. What is your experience? How do you feel as you look at the garden in this way? Now again, just imagine taking off those lens and again, being able to see the vast array of colors, the variety, and how it delights the senses. How do you feel now? What sensations arise? And which do you prefer? Go ahead and open your eyes now. So I know I prefer the richness, the beauty, the fullness of life expressed through the many variations of color. I want you to take a moment now and just kind of look around your space and see what you notice in your personal space, what colors are present, what variety is present. 
So this isn't just a silly kids pretend game, a silly exercise. I want you to think about this idea of being colorblind when it comes to people or humanity. Perhaps you've heard or even said yourself, I don't see color and have embraced the idea of being colorblind. And although this may sound like a lovely attempt to see the truth of someone beyond their race or ethnicity, what it does is it doesn't allow us to see another's differences or the nuances that make us unique. And it doesn't honor the very unique ways that people in the world get to experience life and how someone walking in the world with a different skin tone perhaps experiences that world. It just kind of lumps it all together as humanity, disregarding those differences. Yet we, especially as white folks, have been trained to believe that not seeing color was the right thing to do. And what this does is it indicates that color is somehow bad. Because why would I not want to see color? I remember the first time I heard the phrase colorblind racism. It was a little over 10 years ago, and I was working at a college, and a student was, refer was sharing a story with me about an experience they had in a classroom and experiencing uh, colorblind racism. And in that moment, it really struck me because in my mind, it was two words put together that didn't make sense because at that point in my upbringing, I was trained to believe that colorblind was good and then racism was bad. So putting them two together really created that moment of cognitive dissonance and I had to explore a little bit. So I asked this person, tell me more. And they explained that when someone says they don't see color, that they don't feel seen, that they're not seen. So it really had me in that moment check myself and examine my own ideas and beliefs about oneness and equality and how I was perhaps perpetuating this idea of being colorblind, of one human race, of I don't see color because we're all the same, and how I perhaps had been doing harm despite my best intentions, despite how I was trained in the narrative to believe that that was the right thing to do. So it allowed me to see things from a new perspective and to shift in that moment and to make a different choice. Because my goal is to see people, to truly see people, not despite of skin color or you know, gender, sexual orientation, but to see the fullness of life and to honor it all as that unique being, that beloved before me. So although the idea of colorblindness may seem like an all-inclusive embracing idea of oneness, that I just see your humanity, I see your divineness, well, no matter what the positive intention may be, the impact of colorblindness is that you don't truly see that person for the fullness of who they are. And it invalidates the experience that that person may have based on their race. Intent doesn't override impact. We must be willing to take responsibility for the impact we have and to be willing to grow just as I was in that moment. And I didn't beat myself up. I learned something new and I made a decision in that moment to see it from a new way and to move forward. So continuing with this idea of the garden analogy, imagine if there was just one type of flower in that garden, all red roses, and that's the only flower there was. Without any very uh, variation of color, that would be homogeneity. And we live in a world that is so abundantly diverse that without each of us expressing the divine in our own colorful way, it would be sameness. And quite boring, in my opinion. The science of mind, this wonderful philosophy here that we teach at Ahava is... Uh, 
another has a way of looking at this as well. So the science of mind teaches that each person is a unique expression of God, of life, of that divine source of spirit. And we're all created with sacred worth and value. So living from that awareness has the potential to transform our lives and the world. But colorblindness is antithetical to this idea. Ernest Holmes, the founder of the Science of Mind teaching, in a lecture in Beverly Hills back in 1952, puts it this way. Unity and uniformity are not the same thing. No two blades of grass are alike. So what does this mean spiritually? We have nothing to disprove and everything to prove that this individualization of spirit in each one of us rooted in common soil, having the characteristics and potentialities of its common background, contains what the ancients called the microcosm. We have every reason to suppose that there is, back and within and around every individual, the divine representation of itself as a child of God forever expanding. So who are we? That's what we talked about last Sunday. We talked about who are we? We are that divine. We are spirit in expression. And yet we must embrace all of those identities that make us unique in order to get to know God more fully as the fullness of life and all of its variety. When we think of oneness, we must realize that this spiritual concept of oneness, that we are all connected, that we are all energy, we're all made of the same God stuff. When we think of this idea of oneness, we must remember that oneness doesn't mean sameness. So when we talk about diversity and inclusion and doing the work of anti-racism, we must have open discussion around this idea of colorblindness. Because often, especially in more spiritual circles around oneness, I've seen this narrative that if we were to distinguish and talk about what makes people unique based on race, ethnicity, sexuality, gender, that that's somehow separation. We should just focus on our oneness. But until we honor and recognize all of those things that make us different and unique, we cannot understand this concept of oneness. It's like just looking at one piece of it and thinking it's the wholeness. When someone says, I don't see color, I just see a person, it's not seeing the wholeness and the oneness of life. Colorblind ideologies are problematic because they specifically ignore the uniqueness and the experiences that make us different. Colorblindness is valuing diversity in the abstract. It's kind of like a, yeah, I value diversity. I don't even see color. I love everyone. That's valuing diversity in the abstract. It's not actually appreciating the fullness of life and cultivating that within your own experience. Some people talk about this idea of colorblindness when we look in this world of oneness and spirituality as a way of spiritually bypassing. It's easy and it requires no effort on our part to get to know people as individuals if we just think we're all one and we're all human. And we bypass the opportunity to dig in and to experience life through differences. Pretending that various identities don't exist denies what makes us us, that distinct expression of the creative spirit that we are. Unity is oneness, not sameness. And unless we appreciate the differences between us, we will never develop oneness. We'll just keep drifting towards the same people that are like us, towards sameness. And sameness is a pale imitation of the spiritual ideal and idea of oneness. 
It's not separation consciousness to honor and acknowledge our differences. In fact, it allows us to experience that oneness more fully. Seeing color and talking about race doesn't create racism. I know so many white folks are afraid to even acknowledge color or race, thinking that it's somehow perpetuating racism. But race isn't the problem. Racism is. And not talking or acknowledging something doesn't mean it just isn't there, right? We must be willing to see things and talk about them because seeing color isn't bad because color isn't bad. It's a unique way of life. We are created from this infinite spirit and we have these beautiful hues and shades of skin tone. And yes, race is a social construct, but the way that people live in this world and society, race is very much seen. So it's not something to ignore. In order to really live a life of inclusion, this month our topic is inclusion and action, there is some action required. Inclusion and action. So the action required on our part is to actually create an environment of inclusion in our own personal spheres. When we just rely on default and kind of walking through this world unconsciously with folks that may be in our circles already, we're relying on familiarity. Our bonds because of where we grew up or where we went to school or where we work. And this just creates more of those same circles. Familiarity is comfort, it's safe. Yet relying on the comfort of the sameness of the past and not the variety of life and the fullness of ex expression, we are not broadening our horizons. And life is always calling forth to express through us more fully and uniquely. So as we embrace that about ourselves and we see that about others, we really get to experience and explore this thing called life more fully. In the book Stamped by Jason Reynolds and Ibram X. Kendi, they explain three ways of regarding race in this country. Segregationist, assimilationist, and anti-racist. Defining those words in their own terms, such as, segregationists are haters, like real haters. People who hate you for not being like them. Assimilationists are people who like you, but only with quotation marks, like, like you. Meaning they only like you because you are like them. And then there are anti-racist. They love you because you are like you. He goes on to say that over a course of a lifetime or even a day that we can take on these different ideas and these different representation of these three words. So the first step is always awareness. To notice how you're interacting and to ask yourself, how do you desire to be in this world? in order to experience oneness and to honor the validity, the humanness, the inherent worth and value of someone, you must be willing to love them because of who they are, not how we want them to be because hating them because of who they are, right? The goal is love, love is always the answer. So are you loving someone because they look like you, dress like you, speak like you? Or are you loving someone because they are uniquely them? And this is very, you see this all the time in cliques, not only growing up, but even in a, as adults in, in our work life and our social life, we tend to circulate with those that are like us because it's familiar and it's comfortable. And what I know is that deep down, we all desire the same thing, to be seen, to be heard, acknowledged, and loved for the uniqueness that we are. Diversity lies in the expression of our humanness. 
and oneness lies in that source of life that we are. For all things are of God, yet oneness isn't sameness. Although we are the same, biologically speaking, and spiritually made of that same God stuff, we all have unique needs, different interests, life experiences, and circumstances. So treating people the same dishonors those differences. And treating people equitably meaning that means that we are meeting folks where they are. Equitably, even as opposed to equally, equitably allows us to meet somewhere where they are and to see that. And what I know from my own personal experience is that through that, authentic relationships are formed. When we see our differences and our commonalities as something to embrace, we can experience a deep intimacy with people. And yet, our world is becoming more polarized. It's so common today that if someone doesn't believe or think like this, especially politically, or if they don't look like us, we feel that we can't possibly even be connected. People who disagree often draw lines in the sand instead of hearing out others' arguments. People with different worldviews never share a coffee, a glass of wine, a lunch, a conversation. And now I know this isn't everyone, but even those who do hang out or befriend folks of a different religion or political stance or philosophical viewpoint, often they're somehow told by this societal narrative that they're doing some, that they're somehow betraying their own beliefs by spending time with the other. So I know it's a fine line and I know there's certain things that if someone is an all out hater, it's appropriate to set boundaries, right? And that's, uh, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about being willing to still see the other for that oneness that they are and to be open and curious for how together we might learn and grow. So there always has to be that, that willingness on both parts to learn and to grow, to be heard, to share, to be seen. Otherwise, I'm not saying go out and just have coffee with someone that's going to berate you the whole time because they hate you, right? So just want to be clear on that one. So the invitation really is to see how we can see the variety of life and not be colorblind and to acknowledge and honor all that life is. When we allow love to be the guiding force in our life, love pushes us to widen our circles of inclusion and to reach out to those who are different from us. We shouldn't assume that we should all think alike, sing alike, pray alike, dress alike, behave the same. In fact, we're challenged to embrace the differences, the disagreements, and the uniqueness. Why? Because that's the kind of inclusive, diverse, and authentic way that we get to experience true oneness. So I invite you this week to think about all the unique ways that you show up in this world. You can go back and check out last Sunday's message as we talked about those different identities and the intersectionality of those. So think about all the unique ways that you get to be and experience life and be willing to truly love yourself fully, to embrace, to accept all that you are. And then in order to experience this thing called life at a greater level, I invite you to cultivate a more colorful worldview. So I'm going to give you a real simple action step, inclusion and in action. One action step you can take is through social media, through books, through other entertainment that you consume to consciously, intentionally choose to follow subject matter experts that are from a different racial or ethnic background, a different sexual orientation or gender in order to broaden your horizons, in order to see the variety of life, to see life through the lens of someone else's experience 
and to know that even through all those differences and varieties, we are one and we can experience oneness when we see those differences. So are you with me? Are you willing to take that on as a challenge this week to broaden your horizons, to open your sphere, to experience the fullness of that colorful garden? Yes? All right, let's take it into prayer. Hmm. Again, taking that deep conscious breath and recognizing that yes, there is only one life. And this life is love. This life is creativity. This life is beauty, is harmony. And I know that this life is expressing in, as, and through me right here, right now. I'm so grateful to know this truth that there is one life and it gets to know itself more fully through me, through all the unique ways that we each show up on this planet. I choose to see the variety in life, knowing that oneness isn't sameness, that oneness is expressed through uniqueness, through variety. And we are each here to fully express this thing called life. So I'm just so grateful, so grateful to know that this one life is having its way as my life. And that right where I am is perfect. For I love and accept and embrace all identities. I love and accept and embrace myself fully, knowing that there truly is no us in them. There is no other. There is only one. And I see and appreciate how this one gets to show up as this thing called life in all our beloved creatures, in our humanity. There is a richness to be experienced, and I choose to experience that now. Broadening my horizons, opening my circles to experience the beautiful colors of that garden right here, right now. Open to the inspiration that this brings, the deep connection, the intimacy that these relationships bring enriching my life. So I take a deep breath, accepting this love, this beauty, this harmony, knowing that this is the truth. As I release this into the action of the law that always says, yes, 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 my beloved, it is done. It is so. And so it is. In this place, I remember who I am. Letting fear and worry fall away from me. I open my eyes and see there is only.
Yeah, so now we get to move into our time of conscious giving, knowing that as we give, we receive, we activate that law of circulation, that flow of life that is always flowing through us as us now. So there are several ways you can give virtually right now. You can simply text the word give to 859-209-6996. You can go to the giving tab on our website. You can press donate on Facebook or you can mail in your offerings as well. So I invite you now just to place your hands on your heart, representing that gift that you are giving this day and repeat after me. Divine love as me. Divine love as me. Blesses and multiplies all that I have. Blesses and multiplies all that I have. All that I give and all that I receive. All that I give and all that I receive. I joyously contribute to the vision of Ahava. I joyously contribute to the vision of Ahava. Knowing it returns to me multiplied abundantly. Knowing it returns to me multiplied abundantly. So it is. Hey, hey, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm taking my freedom. Pulling it off the shelf, putting it on my chain, laying around my neck. I'm taking my freedom, putting it in my car. Wherever I choose to go, it will take me from living my life like it's old and 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 go. Living my life like it's golden, 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 golden. Taking my own freedom, putting it in my song, singing loud and strong, grooving all day long. I'm taking my freedom, putting it in my stroll. I'll be high stepping, y'all. Then the joy unfold. I'm living my life like it's old, and living my life like it's old, and living my life like it's old. Living my life like it's old, living my life like it's old and living my life like it's old. Hey, living my life like it's old and golden. I'm holding on to my freedom, can't take it from me. I was born into it, it comes naturally. I'm strumming my own freedom. Playing the God in me, representing the glory. Hope you're proud of me. I'm living my life like it's old. Oh, living my life like it's old, and 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 golden. Living my life like it's 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 golden, golden. Yes. All right, we're living that golden life. Yes, yes. All right, so just a reminder, we have spiritual practitioners that are available for prayer. Go to our website. There's a prayer tab there to contact one of our practitioners. Also, we have Monday through Friday, our morning spiritual practice where we gather online via Zoom at 8 a.m. to meditate and pray together. And on Wednesday nights, we have our meditation and metaphysics. This Wednesday will be online via Zoom as well. You can find all those details on our website calendar as well as that e-newsletter that comes out every week and on our Facebook event, our pages on our events there. So, yes, deep breath. <laughs> 
Yes, mark your calendar for September 13th, our next Zoom service, and go ahead and get your reservation for that concert coming up September 25th. Let us now stand for our benediction and repeat after me, something wonderful is happening to me right now. Something wonderful is happening to me right now. It's this thing called life. It's this thing called life. Life is in my mind. Life is in my mind. Life is in my body. Life is in my body. Life is in the many unique ways I express. Life is in the many unique ways I express. I accept it. I accept it. I am it. I am it. I share it. I share it. Just the way it appears. Just the way it appears. And just the way it appears not. And just the way it appears not. Thank you, life. Thank you, life. One, two, three, four. Let me live in a holy, holy way. Let me live, let me live in a holy, holy way. Let me live in a holy, holy way. Oh, let me live in a holy, holy way. Let me live in a holy, holy way. Let me live in a holy, holy way. Oh, let me live in a holy, holy way. Let me love in a holy, holy way. Let me love, let me love. Oh, let me love in a holy, holy way. Let me love, let me love in a holy, holy way. Let me love in a holy, holy way. Oh, let me love in a holy, holy way. Let me love in a holy, holy way. Oh, let me love in a holy, holy way. We want to thank everyone for tuning in. Please join us again next week. And don't forget, Zoom, second Saturday, Sunday of each month. Please. Follow the experts so we can all get back here in person and give you all a great big hug. Oh, let me live in a holy, holy way. Let me live, let me live in a holy, holy way. I'll wear my mask and I'll keep six feet away. Wear my mask, wear my mask and I'll keep six feet away. Oh, let me live in a holy, holy way. Let me live, let me live in a holy, holy way. Oh, let me love in a holy, holy way. 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 Let me love in a holy, hol